The views and opinions of the guest do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. How's it going? It's Logan of After the Calm, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Boom. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather, and as always, I'm bringing you guys awesome interviews. Today, it is an honor and a privilege to have Mr. Hank Coda, bassist and vocalist Logan Miracle of After the Calm. They hail from Phoenix, Arizona. After the Calm has released the official music video for Stuck on Repeat, directed by Jacob Reynolds, who's worked with Slaves and Dead Rabbits. Stuck on Repeat is one of the band's third single release in 2018, which is produced by Matt Good, who's worked with Asking Alexandria, and the word alive. Guys, how's it going? And happy Halloween to you. How you doing, awesome. John? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's right. A couple of days. What's today? The 23rd, 24th? Yeah. 25th. 25th, man. You're like two days away. <laughs> I, I, I'm, we're, we're both the dads in the band, so time means nothing to us anymore. <laughs> he works from home, too. So Yeah, my days are just, you know, guitar, band, guitar, a little bit of gym, then back to the band. So. God, man, how, how can you do, I mean, honestly, how, how can you do the work from home? Because I would go absolutely bonkers. I don't know. I'm, I'm a homebody. I'm used to routine. So yeah. I have everything, you know, every half hour I got to do something, stand, sit, push up, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, it works out. See, I, I would love it, but I wouldn't get work done. I, yeah. I'd be at home, you know, I'd be, I'd be lounging. Yeah, me too. Routine. Me too. We're going to get into the, all this stuff with you, with you guys. And plus, I want to get into a little bit of Halloween stuff uh, as well because I'm a huge, huge horror fan. Uh, awesome. Um, so we're going to be talking about that stuff as well. So After the Calm has a wide variety of influences ranging from System of a Down to Blink-182. And folks, that's a huge <laughs> range of variety right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so your sound is often compared to A Day to Remember and Four Year Strong. After influences and comparisons, are you guys still trying to discover your sound and still wanting to push outside that box? I think I think I think at the beginning we were really just kind of trying everything, and especially uh, around the, when we put out the EP. Whenever people <laughs> ask, you know, oh, what kind of music do you play? You know, I explain to them all when we play, you know, different types. You know, uh, there will be one song for one and one song for the other. You know, when we were putting out the EP, we we weren't really trying to choose a side. We just kind of like playing with both. But I think now with some of the newer stuff that we've been writing, it's I wouldn't even say like I, I, I'd say not changing as in a sense of finding our sound. But I think if anything, we're like solidifying. There you go. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Like, like uh, so a lot of our songs are starting to become more well-rounded and, and, and put together, you know. I mean, when we put out the EP, we love that CD. I love that CD. When we had that, we just needed five songs. And we had we got five songs and we put it on there. For these other new tracks uh, and with Greenway, too, uh, when we put out last year, we really sat down and just broke apart the songs. And dissected hardcore. Yeah. yeah, and just figured out, you know, what needs to be here? What doesn't, what doesn't need, to need to be more importantly? Yeah. Green Greenway actually technically had like a, a, a an extra like minute almost of like <laughs> at audio, first, at uh, first, and then it got changed. You guys have released your third single, "Stuck on Repeat." What led you guys to pick this song as a single? And give us a little background on this. You know, will there be any more songs released as singles, or are you going to release an EP or full length album possibly? So yeah, Soaker and Repeat was the third of, of the three songs. We did Porcelain, which is more of a more of a poppy vibe. Though off the bat, you have to realize um, me and Logan, we have a 10-year age difference. I'm 33. He's 23. Yeah, 23. So that right there kind of describes a little bit more up to the last question, you know, influences. You know, I'm more of a 90s, early 2000s, whereas Logan is more of the the more recent knuckle puck, which 
I'm not the biggest, biggest fan of them, but I appreciate them. So that's a big part of it. <laughs> but hey, great, granted, I'm into everything. I'm gonna go see Fleetwood Mac with my mother in November. So oh. awesome. I listen to everything. Oh, that, that is fun. awesome. Right? Stuck on repeat. That was more of the the punky vibe. You know, David and I were a little bit of on the older side of the music spectrum. So that was something we were kind of messing with, and we all kind of felt that vibe. And out of the three, that one was the one we felt would be the most, you know, best ideal for a video. Yeah, I, I, I think, because what are you saying with porcelain? Porcelain, which I actually was, like, very nervous to release because it is, out of the three, the most different that we've done. And when we <laughs> approached these three singles, we told ourselves we want three songs, we want all of them to be different, and we want three different people to produce them. And um, we wanted to put them out all separately and just see what the, the feedback was. And we put out Captain first, and that's a definitely more heavier the metal yeah the it's, it's probably the heaviest song that we've ever written mm -hmm. and we got a lot of a lot of people who, who were liking that and then we put out porcelain which like really shocked a lot of people and um that being on like you were saying more of a uh alternative kind of chiller uh mellow vibe mm -hmm. a song but i mean people caught on to it right away and that's exactly what i want i remember when we first wrote that song we David, as soon as I wrote the chorus, the hook, he was like, that's, loved it. that's going to yeah. be the one. But I think Stuck on Repeat, like you were saying, more punk. I think that is the most traditional After the Calm song. That's true. Yeah. If, Stuck you, on repeat. if they have one song to describe it. Yeah. Like, like, like if, you, if you have been a listener for, you know, since the, the EP or even, you know, before that, Bauer, then when you listen to Stuck on Repeat, it's, it's the same band. Uh, and I think... We we like that. Plus the song itself is just it's a it's a hitter. It's a it's a big like banner song, you know. It's a yeah. fun it's a fun ender too. So as as far as uh, the the three song compared to an album or EP, we did yeah, we did this experiment and so far the results are great. Uh, it's faster to do, make easier to produce. We get the results we wanted. A lot of um, social media great, great response too. People love it. Compared to an album, it, could, it was more cost efficient to do it the three song way and faster results, really. That's where it comes down to. You know, John Five did something really cool. He released a full length, but what he did was he released each track as singles so that way oh. folks could pick them up. And I thought that was actually pretty brilliant, actually. Yeah. Genius. Awesome. I, 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 had, a, I had a conversation uh, with, with my mom maybe a little a while ago, and I was actually talking to her and saying, Cause she was asking, you know, why did, why we put out three singles and not just, you know, another CD. And I was starting, you know, right now at least, you know, I feel like the album cycle is, you know, slowly deteriorating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people, a lot of people, especially a lot of younger people, they don't want to sit, you know, for 25, 30 minutes and delve into a, a, an entire album. You know, they want, they want streaming, you know, they want the singles that they can add to their to their playlist not yeah. saying that we are against albums i love <laughs> I, I love sitting down love listening them. to an album reading the lyrics and all the liner notes we're a new new generation we want it now we want it they yeah. want it now want it fast, yeah but know? i mean and, and going back actually to the first question with our writing it, i think when it comes down to another cd we want to sit down and really figure out every song you know what are we trying to say how is everything going to connect and and make sense with each other so i think when that time comes you know we're, we're definitely not against doing a, another ep or maybe even possibly an album i think when the time's right yeah and sadly you know folks they forget very easily these days on, on bands and music they want stuff now 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 instead of yeah. waiting for stuff and that that right there drives me up the wall because <laughs> I, I, i'm an old school guy i can wait for the full album that that, that exactly. you know yeah, that doesn't matter to me you know get the album you get the album that's the way it should be <laughs> yeah. how was working with director Jacob Reynolds who's worked with slaves and dead rabbits on this video guys amazing we we love Jacob this this isn't <laughs> the first time with us working with him he he directed a another video for us for uh, bragging rights off of our uh, EP and uh, he's He's just a super awesome guy, and he he does work for like a lot of uh, great bands and a lot of great up and coming bands in the local scene. And his work is just amazing. And, and you know, he, he's from the the local music scene himself. He has his own band. He's a lead singer, yeah. guitarist. His his band is actually going to be playing 
on a uh, an upcoming show of ours, a benefit show. So that's that's gonna be fun. Those there. kind of people. Yes. So <laughs> Those kind of people. He, he's a great he's a great director, and he's also just a, an awesome guy to work with. That show that's gonna be the Phoenix uh, Humane Society show. Is that right? The benefit concert. Yeah. 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 November November tenth. That's awesome. That's really cool. You guys doing something like that? I like when bands give stuff back, regardless if they're garage bands, big name bands. I don't care. That's that's actually pretty damn cool. Yeah. This will be our third year in a row doing it we are uh, the first year we we the first two years we actually did a, a car wash for the humane society with all the benefits <laughs> going to them with the second year we actually went to the humane society here in phoenix and just they were very welcoming and very open to just kind of giving us a tour and we walked around and did a, a video on it which is on our, our on, on our facebook YouTube. YouTube. it's on our it's on our facebook yeah. and it, our YouTube. it really opened up our eyes to you know where the money goes there's many different programs in there opportunities it's, yeah it's really amazing that was our that was our goal for it and i think after that we were like we want to go bigger you know and you know we want to potentially have this go for as long as we can as long as they'll let us you know yeah. so this is you know this is only the third year you know we're only just getting started with it but we thought you know what better way to do it you know we're a band you know why not put on a show and get you know some great local acts and, and do what we do best. Yeah, you know? do what we do best. Throw on a good show and get a bunch of people to come. And all the proceeds are going straight to the Humane Society. Every single dime, man. Yeah. So here, here's the million dollar question, guys: Would there be any more songs released this year, possibly from you guys, other than just these three singles right now? Unfortunately, probably not. I, I'd love to. I mean, <laughs> I, if we if we had the the time and the money, we we put out. You know, I saw it every month if we could, but um, yeah, I, I I think right at, right now, you know, we have stuck on repeat the release of that that we're kind of uh, riding on right now, as well as the other two singles, and we're just uh, prepping for our uh, our Humane Society show, and uh, after that though, we we do plan to write uh, some new material and back in the lab, as they say, right? Exactly. <laughs> So how was working with your, I mean, you said this is the third producer that you worked with on, on, on each song. So how was working with the producer, Matt Good, that's worked with Asking Alexandria and, and the world, the world Alive? I mean, did he push you guys on this song? Did he step in when he needed to? Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, re- really, really um, the, kind of a half, half deal. You know, we, we had the song, we came with it with the more of the punky vibe. He did add some little, little flair to it, you know, different drum techniques and really, he comes from you know the scene itself. Whether it was five years ago, ten years ago, he knows he knows what it takes to. Uh, he's been to the big game, you know. So that's what's nice about it. Yeah, and and I I think for me, like I I knew about Matt Good well before I ever even thought that we'd be working with him. You know, I I knew where he came from, which is his whole background in the scene, and I was almost intimidated walking in there, but he was just super uh just super welcoming and, and very um i i i'd say just comfortable like like w- w- as soon as i got into the booth and we started working like he he was very encouraging on letting me try whatever i wanted for the song and bringing my ideas that i had and but at the same time he was also very cool with bringing his own ideas that yeah. kind of made the song just that much better it, it was pretty awesome when i when i was done with my bass part he, he looked at me like Great job! You don't suck. <laughs> the best compliment so far in my in my life. <laughs> How much local support does After the Calm get via venues and radio play? Do you guys get a lot or no? Um, yeah, yes and no. Radio play, not so much. Um, well, yeah. we, we, have, we have we've been on both major stations here, uh, KUPD and uh, ninety three three. Yeah. But but KUPD, it's more that's more of a you know commercial hard rock. You know you have to. I don't want to say you have to know somebody, but if we're, if we're not if we're not the Chili Peppers, it's gonna be a little <laughs> tougher. But um, 93.3 has a local section, so um, a couple of times every every week actually they do have opportunities for bands, and that's really where we strive for. We feel our songs are more in that realm, anyways, more the indie slash alternative. So that that's for the radio side, but locally the the bands here are awesome. We've had a lot of support. You know, if we need a photographer, we have, you know, we have a, a good idea of three or four in mind and they know photographers. If we need videographers, obviously we have Jacob Reynolds and, and more. It's just a big network of amazing bands, amazing people here. 
What do you guys hope the fans take away from after the comms music or message you hope they hear while listening to it? That's a very good question. I think but our, our music comes from real life experience, yeah, whether it's yeah, yeah. or bad. We'll, we'll start We'll start out with that. So like all of our songs, when I go into writing them, I, you know, I, I want, I want it to be something that either me, myself, or any of the other guys I'm related to, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to write about something I, I don't know about because, you know, I'm not going to, you know, preach like I, like I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but I think I just want, cause every song touches on a different topic yeah, or, that's, that's the beauty of it. or a story. So, you know, it's, it, there, and I, I just mm. with the, the different genres that we kind of dip into, there's something for everybody and, and on all of our music. I, I think at the end of the day, what I want people to take from it is just, just be who you are. I think a lot of the songs do kind of revolve around just the the central idea of, you know, just being a good person and just enjoying life. And, you know, whether it be music or you're not, you know, some people can interpret our, our, our songs and be like, I want to be in a band, you know, or some people can take it and plug it into their real life. And, and that's what I love about music. And if anything, that's what I want people to be able to do. I want it to be able to affect them the way that it affects us. How much growth musically, guys, have you seen this band and yourselves go through from the debut EP that was released in 2015 or 16 called Ignis Factuus to these Whoa. three new singles, or has it just been more of a personal growth for all of you guys involved with this? And I hope I said that name right. Yeah, yeah, I- Ignis Factuus. We we found that online while making uh during the album process, but that was uh, awesome, growth, definitely growth. I mean, one thing we learned from our, our producer, uh, Corey, who recorded the album, uh, don't bore us, get to the chorus. We, in, in Ignis Factuous, there are, you know, little, little pieces where kind of Metallica like it didn't have to be there, but it was there. So with these three newer songs, we, we stuck to that, um, that motto, you know, don't bore us, get to the chorus, just make it, you know, what What do people want to hear? What don't they want to hear? You know, they don't want to hear Metallica's One, which is like an eight-minute song, right? So, awesome song. <laughs> why, why are you bashing on Metallica? <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we, we've grown a lot. It's uh, I mean, just the band itself, before I was even in the band, or Hanky was even in the band, they had, they had played for a while and, and wrote tons of material, some that we actually ended up putting out uh, when we got the, the lineup together. But... Also, just outside of our the band in our personal lives, there's been you know tons of, of different changes. And Logan became a dad. During yeah, the yeah, yeah. Early, <laughs> earlier this year, I, I became a father. Actually, no, 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 not earlier this year. Late last last year. year, yeah, because he, he'll be a year <laughs> old next month. So oh, wow. that's how that's how fast time goes by. But if that so, don't, if that don't grow, man, I don't know what does right there. So I, I, I mean, just even with that, you know, like now I have experiences that. You know, a couple of years ago uh, when we started, I didn't have, you know, I couldn't write about or talk about. So I think we've we've grown and matured as people. And we have also, like Hanky said, really tried to just solidify our writing and make sure that we are just making the best material that we can. So what about the writing and recording process, guys? Do you guys do anything to help keep your mind fresh and open to new ideals to to not let the music get stale. Does, do you do anything differently to help you guys out or, or no? I, th- I think uh, one one thing is with us wanting to write or with us writing so many different types of genres, it kind of broadens our spectrum so we can reach out to a bit more than you know some artists or bands who are centralized onto one type of song or one type of music. But I don't, I don't know. I don't. Um... What, what, what I kind of do is if I know I'm going to spend the whole day with the band, whether it's recording or a show or going to a song, I'll listen to something non-rock related, rather if it's, it's mostly hip hop, hip hop, I'm not going to lie. So that way I kind of pull from that different mindset, you know, like what would someone else outside of this genre, you know, want right. to hear, what would make them, you know, comfortable. So I, I do that with, yeah, with everything, you know, if I'm going to be in a, jam session for three hours if i'm going to be recording which could be an all-day thing you know i try to pull from different uh yeah and and w- when we get together to write we we never like we don't want to force it because it and it's never we it's never organic when it comes out that way you know when you if you if you get a room if you get a room and you say all right sit down let's write a new song right now 
it, you know, it's it, you're gonna you're gonna be having some bumps, you know, on your way there. But when you're just, you know, playing and, and jamming, you know, sometimes when we come to practice, you know, we'll play our songs first. We'll practice for an upcoming show, you know, get a little loose, and then we'll start, you know, if we're running to write that day, we'll sit down and we'll just kind of everybody on their own does their own thing. Yeah. And if we all come up with new ideas or something, whether it be me coming up with a lyric or a chorus, a guitar riff, a guitar riff, a drum part, anything, we bring it that that time when we sit down to write and we build off of it. So we try not to come starting off from nothing. We, we want to have something to start with. So what can folks expect at a show from After the Calm who have not got to see you guys live as of yet? Oh, man. They'll, they'll notice our, our, our connection with each other. Yeah. They'll, they'll really see, you know, where we mean business. Well, something we hear a lot is we're, we're, we're tight. No, we're, we're tight musically, I would say. Uh, we've been practicing almost a year before we started playing shows. So, you know, if there's rarely a missed chord, you, you're probably not going to hear it because we know, we do know what we're doing. But there's energy. Don't don't make it sound amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I, I've, I've been doing it for a while. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but off, of, off of what he was saying, you know, I think we're very, I, I, uh, we're very critical of our own selves That's uh, true. Uh, yeah. when, when it comes to everything. We try not to be. We don't want to be, but... And we are on everything. So after every show, we analyze everything. You know, we want to look at how the night went, not just for us, for all the bands, for the venue, for everything. And we take that and we say, we got to do better next time. And we try to do better next time. So I think if anybody who's never seen us before, if they walked into a venue and saw us, you would notice right off the bat that we mean business. We're, we're, we're here to be a serious band and we're bringing energy. We we are gonna be moving the entire time, and we have fun. Yeah, yeah. We're oh, just man. yeah. We're just there to have fun. You know. There's many times, people from the you know the stage they come up and sing songs if if they know it. So that that's one of the fun parts. We we interact. We have fun. We have uh we have balloons. We throw, we throw out for a certain. Yeah, song. yeah, yeah. We do a lot of fun stuff. Our, our we did a cover a while back of the song from Pitch Perfect, the Cup song. And when we when we were still playing that a lot in our sets, we we would bring out giant trash cans painted as red solo cups, and we would throw out <laughs> beach balls, and people would play like a mock kind of beer pong game. So we're not coming up here just to say, "Hi, we're after the Here's our songs." We want to put on a show. We want to entertain you. You paid money to come here, and we want to give you something entertaining. You know, worth going home and saying, "I enjoyed that." Do you guys like the digital era of recording albums to get music out quicker now and plus social media to help reach out to more folks to help up and coming bands who are just needing to get their music out? Do you guys like this that we're in right now or no? I, I like it and I don't. It's it's yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it, tough. it's it, a great tool. It definitely is a great tool. Great, great networking. But other than that, great way to connect with fans. You know, we've had fans um, to uh, request not request, just, you know, message us saying how much they love our music, how, how it relates to them. At the same time, there is going to be, you know, those naysayers. We do get, you know, YouTube comments uh, <laughs> here and there, you know, a thumbs down, which, you know, it, it hurts a little bit, but it comes with, with the territory. Yeah, not just with that, but I think just the actual platforms that we're using, Facebook, we're very lucky to have built a, a good fan base off of not just Facebook, a lot, all of our other social networks, but I think Facebook particularly and YouTube, I think it's, it's very hard to get out to every single one of your fans. You know, they, they all have their, their algorithms and the way that the, the site is based. But I mean, sometimes people don't see a lot of the stuff that we post. So that's why whenever somebody comments or messages us, we try to respond as soon as possible because we want to be, we want to keep that interaction fresh and, you know, you know, we don't want somebody to think that we don't care and we don't want to, yeah. uh, you know, you know, listen to what they have to say, you know, because we're doing this for them. What does After the Calm bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now possibly? I know everybody's not reinventing the wheel, but what do you guys think you bring differently to the table, man? That's 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 the hard that's question, right? We're we're a bunch of nerds. We uh, we listen to a little bit of everything, so yeah. I think I think because not just me and Hanky, but the <clears throat> the entire band, our age is very spread out through the spectrum. Like I said, I'm the youngest. Uh, Hanky's the oldest. That's ten years apart. Within that, you got three other guys. So we 
we all have different influences of what we've grown up on. And I think that plays a part that helps our writing, but also makes it a little tougher. It makes it tougher, yeah. You you can hear from the three singles, the three latest singles, you know, the music musical differences for for sure. I'll tell you that. I, I think I think with us playing so many different types of songs, we like doing that because we don't want to be boring. We don't want to play the same songs all the time. But at the same time, we don't even you know. Uh, looking at some of the newer stuff, even some unreleased stuff that we have under our belt right now, that I don't think that I would have ever thought we would have wrote or conceived at all back, you know, two, three years ago. So who knows where we'll even be, you know, in another three, five years. I, I think at the end of the day, we just want to write the songs that we like and that we think are good and are going to hook people. What made the, each of you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you guys? MTV. Before MTV played uh, Real World and Snooki and what is it, what's it called? Jersey Shore? Yeah. I like yeah. Jersey Shore. Yeah. I, I like Jersey Shore, but I'm on the bandwagon of I don't like MTV <laughs> yeah. anymore. Just, just, you know, <laughs> for me, coming from uh, R&B, hip-hop, you know, growing up with sisters, seeing someone, you know, creating music on, on their own with the guitar, with drums, with the keyboard – that that always that always stuck with me personally. Like, wow, this guy doesn't need you know five you know singers in the background. He just needs one guitar. Nirvana, you know, take a look at Teen Spirit. That for me was that was it. You know, that sparked that interest. And here I am, 33 years old. You know, we're trying to shoot for shoot for my dream, all of our dreams. I, for me, it's weird because there was never like a moment or like a band, or, like a song that like I was like, oh, you know, like clicked for me that I wanted to do it. I think. Throughout my whole life, I've always had this connection with music, and I've always wanted to do music, whether it be playing it, you know, producing, making, it, it just as long as I'm around it. I, I always wanted that as a kid. And, you know, then going through school, I did singing, I did choir for, you know, over five years <laughs> uh, for a, a long time. So that helped me as I was maturing, you know, small little kids, like a grown man, my voice. But I think. When I started seeing not just the bands, but what the scene was, when I started seeing live shows and what these crowds were doing and everybody singing along to every single word, that's what hooked me. Uh, and and I mean, I think when I when I played my first show ever, it was in a band in high school uh, before this. And um, as soon as I was done, I was I I wanted more. I when I get up on the stage, it's it's it is like a drug, and it's <laughs> it's it's awesome. It's amazing because I can just it for that 25, 30 minutes. I own the stage, and these people are here to listen to whatever I have to say, and I just get to be me for for that time. And I think that's once I realized how free I was able to be with music. That's when I realized I really wanted to do it as a career. You guys got to play the Vans Warp Tour last yeah. concert series of, of, of its existence. So I know there's other shows that you have done, but has there been a show or a moment that stands out for you guys that, that made you say, yeah, this is worth every minute that we have spent on this and all the effort that we've put into this? Has that, have, have you had that moment yet or no? Yeah, for, yeah, I, I believe we have. We all grew up in Phoenix and, you know, Tempe, Glendo. Uh, we, we play, you know, the venues where it holds 200, 200 people. But growing up, there's a place here called the Marquee Theater, which is where, you know, the big bands come, you know, the the, uh, the Foo Fighters when they first, you know, came out. But have an opportunity to play the Marquee Theater, which we did. That's that's a bucket list right there. Um, we've seen all my favorite acts growing up. And being on that stage, you know, I, I took a picture of like a before and after from when nobody was there to when, when we were on stage with almost a thousand people, right? That's yeah. Geez. We opened up, we opened up, <clears throat> excuse me, we opened up for an um, Arizona band called Authority Zero. They have a huge following toward the whole world already, and we had to open up for them, and it was, yeah, bucket list. The, yeah, that, that was a, uh, <clears throat> that was a very uh, crazy experience, just being able to say that playing on that stage i think for me though personally i have a different moment which is a little earlier for the band which was our ep release at um, a venue out here called jill's grotto which is an amazing venue that we played some very very amazing shows at but that was when i think i realized that 
people were actually catching on. And now that, that was the show when I was like, oh, people actually like our, our music and they, and they care about it. Is you know, we, were, we had released our CD that day, so we were very hyped about that and very proud of ourselves. And then we, we played a show, and the, it was a packed crowd. And I think we, 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 we had like an intro that we played right to our first, <laughs> that we played right to our first song. We, we played Enya. Um, the the time the, goes, only time only time yeah. yeah and and we played that into our first song so there wasn't really a crowd interaction until after we finished the first song and they started roaring it was and crazy it was the loudest crowd that I had ever heard <laughs> and it 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 took me back literally so we're just a few days away from Halloween I want to know what your guys' favorite thing about Halloween is possibly if anything if you guys even celebrate it or not <laughs> candy. <laughs> I, I, straight and simple. I mean, I, at this point, I'm, I'm I'm a little older. I'm a dad now, so I'm I'm. It's been a couple of years that I've been never gone trick or treating, but I guess I'm gonna have to get back into it now. But I think, yeah, just for me, candy, or you know, if there's if there's a nice party with friends and stuff, it is fun to dress up in different costumes and just kind of get together with friends and just have a good time. Nice, nice. I don't know. Um... Is it my my first year? I just uh, got a I just got a house actually. So my first year, I'm gonna be giving out candy for a little bit. It's pretty interesting. I, for me, I like I like seeing the kids. You know, they're they're so innocent. They they haven't been just I can't think of where just they're not paying bills yet. So they, <laughs> they don't know what's going on. You know, they're gonna go dress up, be where they want. Just seeing the kids having having a great time for me that that's what it's all that, about. That that childlike wonder. It's you, you like knowing that it's still alive. Has there been any new horror movies that you guys have recently watched or, or wanted to check out possibly? I don't know, because I'm pinky with newer horror. Like, newer horror, like, I, I feel like a lot of it, just like with a lot of music, it caters to a certain audience. Jump scare here, you know, insert this part here. But I think um, a scary movie. I, I recently watched the whole series on Netflix called The Haunting of Hill House. I've heard a lot about yeah, that. Really, too. really great. Have you seen it? No. Yeah. I, 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 same thing with, with you, man. I've heard a lot about it. Everybody talking about it. Break it down for us. Tell us it's about it. It's wonderful. It's um, basically quick rundown. Parents, obviously, um, five kids in a haunted house. They don't know it's haunted. Things happen, you know, good and bad. Great dynamic, great cast. 10, 10 episodes, one episode is about every kid, it's five kids. Great ending, it, I really do. It really scared. There's jump parts where you're just like, oh man, so I, I think it's worth it. At least watch the first episode and go from there. I highly recommend it. I, 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 I guess I would, I want to go see the, the new Halloween movie, but I've been hearing mixed reviews about it. I'm going to be very disappointed if they don't close it up, just because <laughs> like, I feel like if you guys are pretty bad Jamie Lee Curtis and you're going back to kind of like the original like OG storyline, then like end it, end it right, you know. Yeah. I mean, they, they they ended Wolverine. I mean, I know <laughs> I know they'll they'll rehash That's another guy in ten years to play him, but I mean, Hugh Jackman knew when they ain't it up. I mean, I think Michael Myers knows when they ain't it up. But if if <laughs> if they end Halloween, I'll go see that one. Guys, how can folks stay in touch with you all? Buy some merchandise, the these EPs, these singles, things like that. How can you do that? We are everywhere on social media. Um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We actually have our own website, afterthecom.com. It's uh, a great way to contact us. We actually have merchandise on there yeah, we, that you can't get anywhere yeah, else. Yeah, we have a lot awesome. of very, very exclusive, like, unreleased. Well, not unreleased, but, like, unattainable almost uh, merch that you can only get off of that website. So, afterthecom.com. But, yeah, uh, we are on every social network platform, and we are we try our best to be, like, responsive as as soon as we can. Yeah, just come say hi. We'll reply and be our nerdy selves. Yeah, what, you know, whether you want to ask us a question, you know, give us a compliment, tell us we suck. Even uh, with anybody hiring for gigs, I mean, we go from, you know, your normal venue shows to birthday parties. We played for some of the uh, kind of outlet centers out here. The market, was it the Tempe Marketplace and the Westgate, we played out there. That was a great time. What, yeah. So we play covers. So like anybody that needs us to do anything, like, we kind of try to do it all. So yeah. Before I let you guys go, would you care to do a promo for the show? Yeah, yeah. How's it going? It's Logan of After the Com, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Boom.
Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Folks, please go and like us on Facebook. That's Bod's Mayhem Hour. Also, we have a YouTube page where you can listen to all the interviews, and plus we have a podcast link as well on the Bod's Mayhem Hour Facebook page and also in the YouTube links on all the videos. Check us out. Guys, thank you so, so much for doing this, and uh, best of luck to you all. Thank you, Thank you for having us, and thank you for everybody listening. That's when I take my